Hey everyone, welcome once back to Billy Bob Trucking. Yes, it's been a while since I've done one of these. Um, because basically I've been busy. God, have I been busy. Oh dear God. But yes, uh, I thought it was well overdue <laughs> doing one of these. It's been a bit too long, unfortunately. So, yeah, let's get going on it. Um, last time we did it, I can't remember what happened. <laughs> Just we did a delivery. Which is good. Um, I was so unprepared for this one. Let's just get straight into it. Let's see what jobs are available. Freight market. And where are we? We're currently in Zurich. Apparently went to Zurich last time. I don't remember doing that. But there we go. So let's have a look. I don't want to do a too long a journey. But I do want to earn some decent money if I can. Uh, some logs to meths. Um, hmm... Trying to think what to take. Got some tractors I can take to the Czech Republic. Which in theory then I could move on to Prague. Mm. That's gonna take 13 hours get yeah, go on. Let's let's take these tractors. So let's here we go. Now I've got to check my controls are working alright, because uh, one thing I did do. I did purchase a fake Xbox controller to try that out. It was working until the batteries ran out. And in, well, saying that, I say the batteries ran out, and the more it's just, it thinks the batteries run out so it loses connection and so on, and it gets messy, basically. Very, very messy. So, anyway, let's go and pick up these, uh, these tractors to take. So, what's been happening? Various things. I can remember which key was which, that's that key I want. Um, right, what's been happening? What's been happening is I've been um, basically promoting my Twitch quite a lot, admittedly. Um, which has been doing well. Um, as of time recording right now, I'm at 171 subscribers, subscribers, followers, which is cool. And I've uh, been having a fun time. I've uh, been hit a couple of times by trolls, unfortunately, but what can you expect? Trolls will be trolls, to be honest. So, yeah, but, <laughs> well, there we go, what more can I say, idiots are idiots. Let's just overtake this guy, because why not? But yeah, uh, I've also recently brought a GTA 5, which I am planning on some point doing uh, some videos for. I've just got to find the right settings for me to be able to do that, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I did originally play GTA 5 on the console, but I don't have a capture device, so I didn't do videos about it or anything. And at the time I was playing on console, I didn't have my rig. So, yeah, recording would have been a bit difficult. But no, I'm loving it on PC. It took many attempts to get it to work through various issues with the download. Um, because basically my internet service provider at the moment has oversubscribed my line. Thanks, Virgin Media. And so, yeah, I'm not getting my full 156 megabit down. Which sucks! But they're saying it's going to be sorted very soon. Um, uh, at the moment, I've got a connection, so I'm going to record this video and then do a stream. Uh, but yeah, it, it took uh, all in all seven downloads, seven like full re-downloads to correct any corrupted files or anything, which was not very pleasant at all, to be honest. But yeah, oh well, what can you do? Uh, what else has been going on? I've launched my website, uh, blackorkso.com, which is cool. Um, I've got my TeenSpeak server running. Pretty much 24 hours a day, which is also cool. So, a lot of the time when I'm streaming, um, well, actually, no, all the time I'm streaming, I'll be in my TeamSpeak server. And so, you're more than welcome to come and join me, hang out, have a chat. Um, I do try quite commonly to, quite oftenly, to have games with people uh, who watch my stream when it makes sense and stuff. So, yeah, blackhawkerso.com, it's all cool. Um, I've also got a partnership deal 
going with um, on affiliate deal going with a company called cdkeys.com which is who I brought my copy of GTA 5 through and uh, City Skylines and stuff like that um, who do stuff at discount and it helps me so there will be a link uh, and I ask that you go and have a look uh, see if what games you want are on there see if you can get them cheaper which most majority of the time is cheaper and purchase through that link because my god does it help me out big time if you do that I don't need my main lights on at the moment so that's just the quick summary roundup of what I've personally been up to um, because yeah I'm probably slightly probably going into more detail about some of the things in the meantime whilst we're doing this drive but what else has been going on since I last did oh god I can't remember how long ago it was now um, gee let me think I think it was about the time when there was issues with Top Gear yeah the Clarkson incident was happening but we hadn't known the full details of what was going to happen to Clarkson well Clarkson is no longer working for the BBC um, well no longer working for Top Gear and basically Top Gear by those things is going to be no more which sucks Top Gear was my Sunday night viewing not anymore I'm afraid um, news broke as of yesterday which would have been Friday uh, yeah depends on when this video goes up I'm not quite sure when yesterday is for you <laughs> yet but no news broke that um, the executive producer uh, a guy called Andy Woolman has left as well um, Hammond uh, Hammond and May as far as I'm aware both said no, they're not doing any Top Gear without Clarkson and so basically the BUC have screwed up big time and lost one of their biggest shows uh, how uh, I just don't know words are failing me about that and how ridiculous it is and how annoyed I am that one of my favourite shows is no more basically it sucks it really does suck but I suppose, you know, as people keep saying, he did do something wrong. And so he should pay for it. But I think it could be handled in a very different way. But, yeah. Wait and see. Uh, there's rumours, various rumours going around. Like, you know, things like Sky wants to do a show with the group. Uh, whether that will happen, God knows. Really don't know if that's going to happen. And that car is going to troll me now. Sod you! I just realised I haven't done my special key binding that I normally do. Which allows me to do air horn, horn and flashlights. All at one key press. Yeah, I need to sort that out. <laughs> oh dear god. Um so yeah that's top gear it sucks but yeah but there is some more relevant recent news that's been coming out and I'm gonna take tackle them bit by bit to be honest um, one of them I'm gonna come out with is one I'm thinking of actually doing an independent video about to be honest because people don't seem to grasp the concept of how wrong this thing is and that's to do with World of Warships. Now, World of Warships, as some of you may or may not know, I am in the closed beta of. I got into the closed beta via the forms and everything. I wasn't one of these people who paid to get in. Um, because, yeah, I was lucky enough, basically, to get through the form process. Now, World of Warships isn't a difficult game. It's really quite a simple game to pick up and start playing. The difficulty of it is becoming good at the game. That's something that War Thunder, War Thunder, War Gaming is good at doing. None of their games really are difficult to pick up. They're just difficult to become really good at. You know, World of Tanks, how quickly can you pick up? Well, within seconds of downloading it you could be in driving a tank and it's natural makes common sense you know was to move your tank around and then your guns or turret is controlled by your mouse 
simple thing they haven't broken any cardinal sins of basically what an FPS is like so yeah that's kind of cool but what they're doing with World of Warships is, is it's simple to control a ship it's not hard to drive a ship the difficulty is in shooting and not necessarily just shooting shooting accurately okay anyone can shoot the guns or however many guns your ship has you can easily shoot it whether you hit the target isn't a matter altogether um, now when they were in alpha testing there was a bit of game code being tested because it was the alpha test and they didn't know how exactly they wanted the game mechanics to work but there was a bit of code they were testing where basically you got a lead indicator on the ships um, same, very similar to uh, War Thunder arcade aircraft there was a, a marker that you aimed at and as a large majority of the time as long as you aim at that marker you knew that you were pointing the guns with enough lead on your target to be able to hit whatever you want to shoot variance then happens in how much your guns elevated de de elevated or de-elevated uh, if you aim a little bit in front aim a little bit behind the person changes their speed now the decision was ta taken by Wargaming to remove that from the alpha but it turns out the game code is still there in the core engine um, I think one of the reasons it might still be there is because bots might use the code in some way uh, in the cooperative battles to work out how to hit the player target and so on and so forth someone has released a mod called aim assist or at least majority of people call it aim assist I'm not 100% sure if it actually is called aim assist some people are calling it aim bot which yeah there's, there's a variance and difference between aim assist and aim bot but that's a whole different discussion there but what it does, it reactivates this code and gives you your lead indicator. This is ridiculous. If I just said that to you, you'd think, what? So this person gains an advantage by having this lead indicator and knows where to aim. Surely that's illegal against the game. It's bannable. Well, War Game have turned around and gone. As far as we can see, because it's not necessarily breaking the core game mechanics, you know, it's not an aim bot, the person still has to aim themselves, they've deemed it to be legal. Along with the proviso of they are going to continue to monitor the situation. So, Wargaming has turned around and said, okay, this aim assist, which is blatantly giving people an advantage. I mean, if it wasn't giving people advantage, would they use it? I don't think so. This aim assist is legal in their eyes of wargaming. This has torn the community apart so much, it is ridiculous. There is, uh, there's, oh shit, sorry. There is constant arguments going on in the forums about whether this should be allowed, whether it should be banned. Uh, people are there going, oh, I don't see any problem with it. Well, blatantly, other people are using it and seeing it's an advantage. There is videos out there, which, uh, if I can find one, I'll link you to it, put a link to it, that displays exactly what this thing does. Um, I'm thinking, I'm not sure if I can keep clear conscience if I do it, I'm thinking of getting it, just doing a game, just to record it, what happens. Um, and then make a video about this. Um, but yeah, blatantly is giving people an advantage. Okay. Um, one person I read, uh, oh shh. Sh <laughs> Fucking hell, that was close. Getting trolled by AI. Well, it wouldn't be UTS if it wasn't. But yeah, um, one person I've seen said that their hit ratio. Or accuracy went up by about 30% upon activating this mod. I mean, 30%. 30% of the time, uh, you had a 30% increase on hitting. And this aim assist aims, gives you the lead 
on critical components, i.e. Uh, boiler rooms, or what's known in the game Citadel hits. It aims for that, which normally results in fires, um, engine destroyed, things like that, um, or just steering problems. If you hit the Citadel, it, it, it destroys major components. And also, a lot, some of the ships... If you get what's known as a Citadel hit, will also be a magazine hit, which will cause a one-shot kill. Let me say again, a Citadel hit, which this mod aims, helps you aim for, can cause a magazine hit and a one-shot kill. What the hell? How is this allowed? How is that AI trolling me so much? There we go. How is this allowed? Seriously. There is blatantly an advantage going on because people are using it. And now, there's no more of this, I'm playing this game. Uh, I, 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 uh, let me reword this. I have seen it where basically someone has just got a really good shot. They had a really good shot on someone. Um, one shot, pretty much, is to that hit from a battleship, which aren't the most accurate things in the world, admittedly. But he did one shot kill because he hit the guy's magazine and instantly he was just there going, I'm reporting you, I'm reporting you, you aim button, you aim button, you aim assisting, you're using the illegal mod. Blah, blah, blah. No, a person where I could tell this guy just had a lucky shot. It happens. But now the fact that you can't just have a lucky shot anymore. No, no, if you, if you hit someone, you're instantly getting accused of using the aim assist. Sorry, Wargame, this is broken. This must be removed. Now, people have speculated as to why Wargaming have, at the moment, saying it's allowed. We're going to investigate or monitor the situation. People have speculated the reason is, is because the mechanics that this mod exploits, because I'm calling it an exploit. I'm not just calling it a mod, I'm calling it an exploit, a hack. What it what it's doing is it's using some part of the core game mechanics, whether it be what the bots need to work and operate, or whatever. And basically, wargaming can't remove the code that it relies on. That's what I get the feeling about, and it just seems wrong. And they don't want to come across as being powerless, yeah, you know, not being able to do anything about it. They're, they're worried about losing face. Well, sorry, but leaving in there is also losing face. If they turn around and said, we don't agree with this. We are working on a solution to remove this from the game. Then, okay, everyone be like, right, okay, we've just got to put up with it until they find a way of removing it. But the fact they said, oh, we don't see a problem with it, but we are going to monitor the situation. What the hell? How is that going to make me feel any confidence in what Wargaming are doing? But it's one of those ones that there's been a lot of uproar about this. There's lots of discussion going on. There's going to be some serious crunching of numbers going on at Wargaming. Um, people scratching heads a lot, I imagine. Um, it's, it's a risky thing that's going on. And they're walking a very fine line because they're onto a winner. They really are. And this could snatch them from the jaws of victory. It really could. But as I say, I'm most likely going to do a video about it. Uh, I've, I've already yacked on it for quite a, a bit about it already. Um, I will, and I need to sleep my driver. Oh shit, I'm going to be driving in the dark, which I didn't want to do. Bollocks. Um, Actually, how long have we got till I need to sleep? Four hours, yeah. I've got to pull in. Um, yeah, I will do a video about this because I, I want to get my voice out there about it. How much I disagree with this and stuff, so... Yeah. I'll talk more about it at that time. Other thing that's going on. Now, this next bit I want to talk about it's literally breaking news. Uh, it's happened over the last 24, 48 hours. Um, it's changing the information about it from minute to minute. 
uh, and it's about Steam Workshop. Now, Steam Workshop is a great idea. It's somewhere a piece basically people who like given up their time to make mods for games can put mods in an easy accessible place for people. And the idea is that because because some mods can be incredibly difficult to install, it gives you um, an easy way of installing them. And you know what, I'm going to get my screenshot while I think about it. it. Gives you an easy way of installing them. Now, great. Uh, hang on, let me just. I'll try and remember the keys now. Uh, e for down. Oh yeah, that looks mean. Uh, focus plane, blur out the background. Go blur strength strong, saturation cranked up. Uh, C and X is to rotate. Don't want to rotate it at all. Yeah, there we go. Right, so yeah, it gives you. It makes mods really easy to install. Now, certain games like Eurotruck have just made mods easy to install full stop. They just turn around and go, okay, if you want to install the mod, drag it to this folder, job done. And I've just had to pay a loan, yay. Um, job done. Great, thanks. Now, some games it's more difficult than that, admittedly. And why is it still, okay, it was still going, at, apparently I had my engine brake on when I didn't. I've got time to deliver this now um, what's happened with this though is they've now turned around and gone okay we're, we're rolling out a new thing that allows you to support the mods okay well what's this then right the deal is mod makers um, bear in mind they did not make the original game or anything they just made a modification to the game it's mod mod makers can now charge for mods let me just say that again mod makers can charge for mods ok I'm feeling a bit uneasy about this but ok go on what what do I need to know about this basically they're rolling out for Skyrim at the moment uh, only on Skyrim at the moment but basically you can make a mod for Skyrim and charge for it it does not go through any verification process uh, you do not even have to ask the makers of Skyrim permission to make this mod. Uh, you just make it and you charge and you can, in theory, in theory, profit from it. Now, here's the hidden small print. A mod maker makes a sword. And I'm saying sword and almost everyone else is talking about this at the moment is going about the swords, but this is the easiest concept to come up with. Mod maker makes a sword. And they charge one dollar for that sword. Okay, if you're going to be gullible enough to pay one dollar for a sword, but whatever. What? Okay, one dollar for a sword. Wait. Okay. Twenty-five cents of that one dollar goes to the mod maker. It were. Yeah, seventy-five percent goes to Valve. Now, I haven't read up this. I've heard about it. apparently. Of that 75%, 45% of it goes to the original game maker, so this would be Skyrim. The makers of Skyrim will get 45% of that, and then the remaining 35, 25? Well, no, is it 45? Basically, the remaining percentage uh, will go to Steam. Now, why should Valve necessarily be making any money from this? They will, but anyway, why should they? Yes, granted, you put your mod forward to Steam Workshop, it goes onto Steam servers, it get hosted. So you don't have to worry about hosting or anything like that, you put it in a centralised place. Now, if Steam turned around and said, okay, we need a small percentage, a couple of percent, just to cover the hosting costs. Because then this is going to be a transaction purely between you and, as the mod maker, and the game maker. Okay, that's reasonable. But why such a large percentage valve? 
Oh, because Valve sees it as a chance to make money. Also, some people have said this one, and I kind of do don't agree with this one, but why, when it's a, a mod, should the original game maker earn any money from it? Really. I mean, all they've done is said that you can make a mod for the game. They may have possibly released an SDK to make things um, easier, in which case, okay, fair enough, whatever. But a lot of them is literally just no, we've allowed mods. We're not banning people from using mods. And they're earning a percentage. What the hell? You know, it's ridiculous. Yes, okay, it's, an, it's potentially, in theory, a consistent revenue stream. But it's a way of shifting microtransactions out of the game into the mod scene. What's going to happen now? It's, what could potentially happen? Think about it, you know, like a game maker could not be bothered to make a simple feature for a game. A feature that a mod maker might do. Well, are they going to pay an engineer to the software developer to sit there and develop the, the feature and put it into the game so then the game comes to you fully prepared and ready to go but might be slightly delayed or they're going to release some time without a feature rely on the mod community to make it for them and then the modder uh, and then earn the money from that from the sales of the mod something feels very icky about that personally you know, it, it could, in my mind, release lead to more games being released, not ready for release, basically not finished, because they just go, okay, well, we're going to charge you thirty, forty pounds, which sometimes translates to about sixty dollars for your game if it's a AAA title that allows mod support. We're going to charge you this much for it, and then we're going to rely on the mod community to make this game actually work make it work uh, add the features that we couldn't be bothered to fit in and you know uh, when you're paying that mod guy to say thank you very much for making this mod this is really cool thank you we're going to take a cut that's just wrong that really is wrong but yeah. and then down to the actual mod makers then there is a bit of a grey area about mods um, there has been issues in the past of people stealing mods uh, stealing them, slightly re-encoding them and then putting them back up as their own well what's going to stop them from going to a free site or downloading a free mod making a minor tweak to it I Instead of a red sword, it's an orange sword. So they just changed the hue and saturation slightly on the colour. Then stuck in our Steam Workshop as a $2 download. Or a dollar download. What's going to stop them from doing that? Nothing. And then one of the other problems as well is Valve turned around and gone, alright, okay, the uh, upon buying a mod, you have 24 hours to test it. If it's fine, you're good. If it doesn't work or creates mod incompatibility issues, which that mods always clash, it's one of those things. It happens to your truck, it happens to lots of things. Uh, SCS is one of the rare companies who have actually gone right, look, we know this happens a lot, especially with map packs. We're going to make it in such a way that uh, and make improvements so people can make map packs for us, which the software to make the map pack is in the game. Um, we're going to make it such a way so it's less likely to happen that map packs are going to clash. Which, thank you, SES, that's awesome of you. But anyway, uh, but yeah, if it doesn't work, you've got 24 hours to refund it. No questions asked, apparently. Well, what happens when, like like with your truck, for example, TSM and um, Pro Mods, major map packages, has to be updated every time. Um, the game gets updated because it breaks every time or even down to the um, ETS2 multiplayer they're constantly playing a cat and mouse game of the game's been updated, right what's broken, let's fix it quick, 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 patch, patch, patch get it out there now, what's stopping someone 
I'm going on to the Steam Workshop, making a mod, charging £10 for it, which is close to about $14, $15. Let it all sell, make sure it works, okay, yeah, great, well done, thanks so much. And then when the patch comes out, doesn't bother to update it. You've paid $15 for an add-on which doesn't work. You could have brought it two days before the patch and then this person just can't be bothered to update it. Really? It just feels dirty and wrong. Because why shouldn't you, if it breaks, be allowed to get your money back? And then, you know, okay, great. Some mods you do want to support. Because you can tell it's a passion project. People have spent days and days and months of their lives in this project. Like, that's how I'm going to say it again, TSM, or Pro Mods. They have spent months working on that thing. You know, expansion, expanding the map of Utrecht. And if I'm great, I think TSM has it. I kind of Pro Mods has it, or is it the other way around? One of them has um, a donation thing. Fair news to them. You know, you've put so much work into it, I would be willing to donate money towards you to say thank you, because you've done an awesome job. They get that donation done. Alright? Thanks so much. Now, apart from minus, usually it's PayPal, does it? Minus like a 1 point or 2.5 percent PayPal cut. Now, Steam Workshop version. Let's work this one through. Steam Workshop version. Valve takes 75% instantly. You lose 75% of whatever the person has paid towards your mod, the work that you put into it. 75% goes just like that. See ya. So you've charged $1 for your sword. You now have 25 cents. Okay. So you need to sell four swords to get back up to that original $1 that sword cost. Or uh, that sword you're selling for. Doesn't sound like a big deal. Okay, yeah, whatever. To withdraw money from the Steam Workshop, you need to earn a hundred dollars. So in that case, you need to sell four hundred dollars worth of swords at one dollar each. Four hundred dollars worth to get your one hundred dollars out of it. So for your one hundred dollars that you're getting out of it, Valve has made and apparently split with the game maker three hundred dollars. How is that fair? Seriously, how is that fair? It, it's ridiculous. And then one of the other comments has been made about it as well is how a lot of mods don't use legitimate stuff. You know, they'll use images that they just found on Google for. What happens is some, actually, yeah, ETS again, some of the trailers you find, you can tell the image of the company logo that's on the trailer. They didn't have permission to use it. It's most likely they've just got it from Google Image Search or off the brand's website. They stuck it on the side of the trailer. Now, because they're not charging, they're not profiting from it, they're just doing a community service in a way of saying, look, look at this awesome trailer mod. A lot of companies ignore the fact they kind of let it slide and like, okay, you're not profiting from it, whatever. You know, well done, thanks so much, you know, for some free advertising. Yeah, whatever. Now, the minute money comes involved, this is going to go out the window. Because, say, I don't know, uh, Shell. There's a, big tr there's a big mod going around at the moment with Shell. Uh, apparently is a paid mod for the truck that goes on. It's a Renault um, kind of which model it is, but there's a new Renault truck that someone's made a mod for. It looks impressive, but it's a Renault, so I'll never buy it. And they are charging for the truck. Uh, it just happens as an add-on so you get for free, and they have to stipulate it's for free, you get skins. One of the skins is a Shell skin. Now, more than likely, Shell have not given permission to use the skin, but because they're determining that the skin is free, cost you nothing to get the skin. You're paying for the truck. Cost you nothing for the skin, and so therefore they're not profiting from it. So Shell probably they're going, okay, oof, it's some free advertising, you know, whatever. Let it slide, you're not profiting from the skin. 
because you can get the skin separately immediately. Say they charge for that skin. Well, then Shell are going to turn around and go, well, I'll tell you what, you're profiteering off our brand, our trademark, our logo, hand over money. Should that then start happening and say, I use that skin in a video? Now, i am got adverts running on my videos, which admittedly make me virtually zero money, but meh. I've run adverts running. Just because I am then using their logo and I, this whole fact that the mod is charging for it, per their interest about it, does that then mean that Shell is eligible to money from my video? Any money I make? Possibly. It's one of those weird kind of grey, might be talking about my own ass kind of areas because there's no clear cut. One thing we do know is that a lot of mod makers ask for forgiveness. They just go ahead, do something, don't think about the consequences, and just go, look, we're sorry, please let it slide. And nine times out of ten, the company's going, okay, whatever. Or they'll say, right, look, we're not going to sue you because you've not made any money from this. Just please remove our logo, whatever. All right, whatever. The logo goes, but the mod continues and lives on. It's this whole different ball game when money money's exchanging hands. And it's something we need to be careful about. It really is, because we're going to see... I mean, we've already seen it with Greenlight. How much crap is coming out of that? Greenlight was a way for people to get their own games on and earn money from Steam. It has to be greenlit by the Steam community and stuff like that. Well, look how much bullshit crap is come out of that. Of crap games that people are earning money from. Lots of money in some instances. And they're going, oh, it's just a joke title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? No, it's not a joke title. The joke, well, the joke's on the people who actually buy the fecking game in the first place. Yeah, and I just realised I'm about to miss my turn. Yeah, the people who are gullible enough to buy the game in the first place, yes, the joke's on them. But it's tarnished the community. Yeah, if you got a mod and it costs you nothing and it's crap, you're going to go, oh, well, that was a crap mod. Oh, but it hasn't cost me anything. Oh, well, I'm not going to use that again. Just now go for a map mod, for example. I keep going about map mods, but yeah, it's one of the relevant things for your truck. Go for a map mod. Now, where you start off at the time may be fine. So you're happy and you let the 24 hours pass. 25 hours into the playing, or after, you suddenly realise, oh, hang on a minute, this whole section of map doesn't exist. It doesn't work. Well, you're not eligible to get a refund. If it's free, you'd just be like, oh, damn it. I'll log a bug support ticket. Thank you very much. Yeah, you get this doesn't work. I'm really sorry, but can you please notify you about it? Blah, blah, blah. When money's changed hands, yeah, it's not going to be like that. You're going to feel like someone needs to pay because of the fact that you're out of pocket. Now, if Steam aren't going to do the refunds and people go enough about it, Let's do that. And people go on enough about it, then potentially the mod developer themselves are going to have to refund. So, but the thing is, their refund won't just be that 25% that they earned. No, it'll be the full 100%. Meanwhile, Valve and the game, manuf the game manufacturer are running down the road laughing. This is ridiculous. This should not be happening. You know, Support mods that you like. Definitely support mods that you like. I was going to up my long distance on that. I was going to find somewhere to park up as well. So, you know, I have donated to mods in the past that I have appreciated and liked and could recognise the amount of work that someone's put into it. And I'm going to buy this. Oh no, I can't buy this garage. Damn it. But I'm going to pull in next to this garage for now. I'm going to pull up. Yeah, support mods that you like. Yeah, if you don't feel like you need to be pressured. 
but the fact that you can't get hold of these mods without buying just feels dirty. But anyway, I have yacked on long enough about that. It's probably almost like a 40-ish, or just under 40 minute video, almost. But yes, make your own decisions about it. I know what my decisions are, my thoughts. Make your voice heard. If you don't like this, send, make some noise on Steam, make some noise on social media, stuff like that. Try and sort something out. Don't go with just the mentality of mods should always be free. Do not. What should be changing is this percentages of what's getting paid to who. That is what's wrong about this whole situation. But yeah, uh, it's going to be one of those debates that will rock on for a long time. But anyway, that's the end of this video. I'm probably confused. I've probably been talking up my ass, and I'm probably going to have some arguments with people in comments or something, but you never know. But until next time, which hopefully won't be as long as way. Oh, yeah. Hang on, did I not turn them on? Yes, I did. Oh, okay, it's because the engine's off, that's why. Until next time, see ya. Bye-bye.